Welcome to the Oregon Trail presentation using Google Maps. What I'm going to have you do is take a little mini quiz after this presentation. So I'm going to state ahead of time so you can be paying attention to what to look out for, what some of the questions of those are going to be on the quiz. One of the questions revolves around asking to name three of the many states that were uh, touched upon during the Oregon Trail that were along the path. Name two key points for each of those states or different state that you choose. There's going to be some key points that we're going to go over. Name at least one food, food item that they were that they brought along the path. Name one equipment tool a way that they went from the start of the trail to the end. What's their means of transportation? And then also name one of their pieces of clothing that they brought. So we're going to name at least three different items, three different states, and two key points about those states. So let's get started on this presentation. The Oregon Trail here is a map using Google Map to represent the path of where it started in the Missouri, St. Louis, Missouri area all the way to Oregon. What the Oregon Trail people did was they wanted to find a new piece of land that was free so they literally dropped everything they had just for this piece of land. They took some things but only the most important things that they knew that they, they could travel with and would be useful them, to them once they got there. So what I did is created a map by using a shape <coughs> to demonstrate the starting to end point. I used this little icon as a symbol to show that the trail was here. The most settlers began here in Missouri on their journey to Oregon to find new free land. If we click on this, start clicking on these yellow, yellow ones, they'll give us key facts about each state. So Missouri. Missouri initially is the main jumping off point with the common head of the Santa Fe Trail and Oregon Trail. That's a key point you could remember. You don't have to remember word for word, just the gist of it. It was the main jumping off point. It's where the trail started. Over here in Kansas, we have that after crossing the Mount Orient at Lawrence, the trail crosses the Kansas River by ferry or boat. So, settlers travel by wagon over the Gen gentle rolling Kansas countryside was usually unimpeded except where streams had cut steep banks. There are passage there a passage could be made with lots of shovel work to cut down the banks of the travelers could find an already established and crossing. <coughs> Over here in Nebraska, immigrants on the eastern side of the Missouri River in Missouri or Ohio used ferries and steamboats to cross into towns in Nebraska. The Army maintained fort was the first chance for the trail to buy emergency supplies, do repairs, get medical aid, or mail a letter. Until about 1870, travelers encountered hundreds of thousands of bison mig migrating through Nebraska on both sides of the Platte River, and most travelers killed several, killed several for fresh meat and build up their supplies for dried jerky for the rest of their journey. In many years, the Indians fired much of the dry grass on the prairie every fall so that only trees or bushes available for firewood were on islands in the Plate River. Travelers gathered in a knitted, ignited dried cow dung to, cut, to cook their meals, which is pretty much cow poop. These burned fast in the breeze and it could take two or more bushels of chips to get one meal prepared. <coughs> Over here in Colorado, a branch of the Oregon Trail crossed the very northeastern corner of the Colorado if they followed the South Plate River to one of the late last crossings. In Wyoming, Fort Laramie, Wyoming was a former fur trading outpost originally named Fort John that was purchased in 1848 by the U.S. Army to protect travelers on the trail. It was the last Army outpost till travelers reached the coast. Lots of sickness was brought here. It was believed that the swift flowing rivers in Wyoming helped prevent the germs from spreading. 
in Idaho, the main Oregon and California trail went almost due north from Fort Bridger to the Little Muddy Creek where it passed over the Bear River Mountains to the Bear River Valley. The springs here were a favorite attraction of the pioneers who marveled at the hot carbonated water and chugging steamboat springs. Many stopped and did their laundry in the hot water as there are usually plenty of good grass and fresh water available. It bypassed the three island crossings and continued traveling down the south side of the Snake River. Travelers on the route avoided two dangerous crossings of the Snake River. And finally, our destination, Oregon. Once across the Snake River near Old Fort Boise, the weary travelers traveled across what would become the state of Oregon. In 1843, settlers cut a wagon road over these mountains, making them passable for the first time to wagons. At Fort Nespers, some built rafts or hired boats and started down the Columbia. Others continued west in their wagon until they reached the Dells. That's a huge part right now. It's very significant because we are in the Dells. We are a part of history. The Columbia River that you can see that separates, it, separates us from Washington is where they traveled a long time ago and it's developed and changed a lot. But that's a piece of history that we have. After 1847, the trail bypassed the closed mission and headed almost due west to present day Pendleton, Oregon, crossing the Umatilla River, John Day River, and Deschutes River before arriving at the Dells. So those are just key points of each state. Those are each states that were involved in the Oregon Trail. And now, some key facts. So wagons. Wagons were approximately about 1,300 1, pounds empty with about 2,500 pounds of capacity and about 88 square feet of storage space in a box. These wagons could easily be pulled by four or six oxen or six to ten mules. Extra animals were often recommended because animals could, sh could stray or become injured or die on the trip. The cotton canvas covers the wagon where doubled and treated with light linseed oil to help keep out the rain, dust, and wind through the covered tended leak rain and dust eventually. Can you imagine having this covered area and it not being prepared correctly and it just everything getting on it then being destroyed so you have nothing to cover yourself? Wagons are generally reliable if maintained, but they sometimes break down and they have to be prepared or abandoned along the way. Abandoned wagons are typically scavenged for needed parts. One wagon could carry enough food for six months, travel for four or five travelers, as well as a short list of household and luxury items, including clothing and ammunition. Clothing and equipment. Tobacco was popular, both for personal use and for trading with Indians and other pioneers. Each person brought at least two changes of clothes and multiple pairs of boots. About 25 pounds of soap was recommended for a party of four for bathing and washing clothes. A washboard and tub was usually brought for the washing clothes. Wash days typically occurred once or twice a month or less, depending on availability of good grass, water, and fuel. Most wagons carried tents for sleeping, though in good weather, most would sleep outside. A thin folded up mattress, blanket, pillows, canvas, or rubber ground covers were used for sleeping. Travelers brought books, Bibles, trail guides, and writing quills, ink, and paper for letters. Scissor pins, needles, and threads of mending were required. Spare leather was used to repair to shoes, harness, and other equipment. Saddle, bridles, hobbles, and ropes were needed if the party had a horse or riding mule. Tar was carried to help repair any injured ox hoofs. The food cooking along the trail was done over a campfire. Fuels used were wood, buffalo chips, or willow. Flint and steel were used to start fires. Some carried matches in watertight containers. Cooking required simple cooking utensils such as butcher knives, large spoons, spatulas, ladies, Dutch ovens, pots and pans, grills, splits, coffee pots, and an iron tripod to suspend the pan and pots over the fire. Here, just really quick, I have some pictures that I have inserted of what it looked like on the trail. So we have here a horse or a mule with the people and some teepees with the Indians. 
we have another example of people gathered around on their journey. This is a late at night picture with a covered wagon and a campfire. And then finally, a map. Here, I just clicked on the map to show it a little bigger, what it represents. It's just an actual map of the path, as well as the one that we created on Google Maps. So that is the presentation of the Oregon Trail as a whole, from starting to beginning point. The next presentation on Google Earth will be more focused on just the Oregon, because that's how it, it relates to us, and we want to make a connection. So we're going to go to Google Earth, focus in on Oregon, and how it relates. So right now, what we're going to do is take our mini quiz with the objectives that we need to cover of stating at least three states that were along the path. Two points about each state. It can be any state, even the ones that you didn't state. A uh, item of food, clothing, equipment, and the means of transportation. So if you need to review, this is on the shared drive that everybody can review it and take notes and we'll get ready.